Put your hands together for ACAG hey. Productions. Hey. We're ready. We're yeah. Ready. We're ready. We're ready. Good afternoon, hey. ACAG hey. Production. Hey. Reaching for the dog on the sky. Just getting ready to have a good time. Good time. Yeah. In the night time. Are you ready? You ready? Mama, sister, brother. Let me give you some good advice. There's a report. They was just a floating. On the board, for this stagecoach is about to move out. It is for everyone that has potential and would love to be a superstar. Yeah, buddy, this stagecoach is leaving for fun timesville. And the Lord God is your time. As you can see, we are all over the low country. We are now in Hampton Park. If you want to be a guest on the show, call us at 843-200-4487. If you've got talent, you need to email Chisholm at at and You can go to Facebook and Facebook Arthur Chisholm. And that's Arthur Chisholm. He'll be riding a white horse. Or you can visit us at www.tifm.ws. Elder Collie Town, let me tell you. I, well, you may know Paul. <laughs> Paul was one of the ones that everybody knew. He was what you call one of the who's who's. I know that. Paul, how you doing? Thank God. I hadn't thank seen. Thank God. It's been many years, but thank God everything's good. By Paul, by the grace of God. it's so good seeing you, you and too, you look brother. good. You I want to find I'm out really what you're eating. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> because I want to look like you look. Well, I don't eat no pork. <laughs> Let me again, start there. I do not eat pork. Paul, I don't eat pork neither. Well, thank God. Paul, do you eat this, meat? I eat. I do eat meat, but the meat I eat is called uh, halal. Uh, it's done what we call zabia, meaning the meat was slaughtered with God's name being pronounced over it. That's the meat I eat today. Boy, you look real good. Thank God. Elder Carly Town, would you, do you have any conversation for Paul? I want to greet him first. As-salamu alaykum, Wa brother. Wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May God peace and blessing be upon you as well. Do right now? Yes, brother. Paul, I want you to take me, just shut your eyes in your mind. Don't close your eyes All now. All right. But I want you to look into the camera and close your mind's okay. eye. Okay. Paul, take me back. Oh, man. Take me back to when we were in school. Oh, man. Back to Hodges. Take me yeah. back to when you used to, you know, when, when you used to have that suit on and you used to look straight up, you know, like, you know. Well, now. Like money. <laughs> I hear you, brother. I hear you. Now I have to say, um, because I know what I know, yeah. those were grandstanding days. And we were all taught, you know, based on the teaching of this society, uh, some of the slogans, be all you can be, yeah. just go for it, just do it. Well, I've learned over the years now that being that way and with that kind of mindset could really lead you to the hellfire. Mm. So I have changed my lifestyle, and I'm not trying to be all I can be as far as this <laughs> world is concerned. Right, right. But I'm trying to be all I can be as far as getting closer to Jesus, Muhammad, Moses, by following the example yeah. in order to worship God the way God order us to worship him. So going back, uh, I don't. That's what I want to ask you. Yes. I, I, I was going to ask you. I was waiting, and yes. I didn't want to be rude. Yes. But, but Paul, can we go back, please, and, yes. and talk about? Is it permitted to talk oh, about? Okay. You know, this is uh, uh, what we've lived is our history. Yes. Okay. That's and, what and you Paul should never close the door to yesterday because, unfortunately, those who do, when you forget where you came from, Talked you have a lot of trouble into where you're going. Okay. You should never close the doors of yesterday. If you keep that door cracked like I do, yeah. whenever something negative come up, maybe you'll hear a whisper from that door and you'll know not to open that door too right. wide. Well, let me ask In you other words, so you won't go back into it. Well, let me ask a few questions. Yes. Back when we were going to school, yes. would you say that we would you say that we were more safe, we had more clean fun, entertainment, uh, whatever we Absolutely. were doing, were you would you not say we were more as one? Absolutely. Uh, here's the big thing that I've learned now over the years. The moral fiber was intact yeah. when we were coming up. We were, had a little more morality. We had respect for our elders. Yeah. We were all hustling, trying to make it in this world um, based on what we were taught, but we had a foundation. We were more God conscious. Today, unfortunately, Satan got a hold of this society, and people are now doing what they feel like doing. We're running based on my desire. It's all about me, me, me. And once again, all of the slogans, the media, what they push on mankind is 
Be all you can be, for example. Mm-hmm. Just do it. Well, these things will cause you paralyzed. You'll end up in the hellfire when you just keep running and ripping. And as we see now, looking back, the society have changed tremendously, and it's going more towards Satan than towards God and paradise. So we need to really stop and take a note from uh, where we are. Okay, Paul, on that note, I'm going to do a little spin. All right. Okay, back during the 60s, yes. we, didn't, we didn't have the mall. We had King Street. That's right. That they was were, our mall. <laughs> right? You King that? Street was our mall because this is where all the shops were. And, you know, of course, we grew up where we were very fashion conscious, mm-hmm. um, most of us. Uh, that's how the society and that, was. You was definitely fashionable. Well, thank God. I, you know, I had, a, I had a nice little way there for a moment. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> and that's what brought me into tailoring, evidently. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know if you know, but part of my story was um, there was a pants uh, that I saw in Abraham menswear. And I went to price this pants, and he wanted $25 for those pants. And I told him that that was too much because the pants were so simple. Mm-hmm. And this was in the 60s. Mm-hmm. And I said, I can make that. But he told me, he looked at me, man, you can't do nothing. And I had short patience. And you don't tell me I can't do nothing. I, I, it really blew me up, right? Right, right. So I swore to him basically and said, well, I'll show you. And that's how I got into tailoring. I went to Burke School and asked Mr. Eddie Graham. Mr. Graham. Mr. Graham, can I come to your class? Um, uh, during my recess and you helped me make a pair of pants he agreed Mm -hmm. long story short I made these pants and I went back and showed Mr. Ham over at Abraham Menswear Mm -hmm. and he was happy to see what I did I actually ended up working for him for a short time but at the same time making these pants I got hooked I loved what I was doing I was now fashioning something with my hands Mm -hmm. And I call it a manipulation. I don't like to use the word creation right. because God is the only creator. Okay. Man is a manipulator. Okay. He can only manipulate from mm-hmm. that which has been created. Okay. Okay. Paul, so everything is in the society that man uses is from something that has been created from the Almighty. What a story. Okay, yeah, Paul. That's my story. In conclusion, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to ask you this. Yes. Now you went. You know we've kind of we come a long yes, way. Thank God. So now. We have we have we have we have we have gone from one stage to the other. Would you say that we by the progressing and all the internet and all that came about? Would you say that we are we are better off? Or, and what talk to me about? I, I, from from what I feel and what I think, um, I thank God for teaching mankind first of all, mm-hmm. because it's by His will and His knowledge of everything that He has taught mankind that which man knew not. So he has allowed us with the knowledge, the limited knowledge we do have, Mm -hmm. to do these things that should benefit mankind. Mm -hmm. In this, we have now the internet and these, all these gadgets that we're using. Of course, there's a lot of benefit. Yes, there's a lot of benefit in it. Mm -hmm. But along with that benefit, there's Mm -hmm. a lot of corruption also. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that internet, we know, could be uh, very uh, productive. Mm -hmm. It can also be very destructive. Mm-hmm. So it takes, I'm saying now to the parents of these uh, young people, they really need to pay attention to what the children are doing with the Internet because the world now has been connected by the will of God who has allowed us to reach out to our brothers from here to China through mm-hmm. this thing called the Internet. Mm-hmm. And we can actually see them. Mm-hmm. So this is truly amazing, but we have to make sure that we're using it in the right way. Long story short, Yes, mankind is better off worldwide, worldly, Mm -hmm. but we are losing the way of worship. We are now worshiping ourselves and our own desire Mm -hmm. instead of following the way that God had ordered for us. Mm -hmm. So we are now losing in that sense, and that's the big loss. Because when you gain this world and lose the hereafter, lose paradise, you are truly a loser. So mankind now needs to stop and take inventory and go back to those beautiful Ten Commandments we, that we were given. So we need to go back and take a look at these commandments and get ourselves back on track before we lose the hereafter. Okay. And unfortunately, this is what's happening today. Okay, so what we are really saying here is that the Internet, not alone the Internet, but television and some of all of the other progress that we've made yes. uh, could be said is good. Yes. And some of it is damaging. It's definitely damaging. Right. Unfortunately. So in other words, we have a shotgun which can be used. A loaded shotgun. We can use to protect ourselves and we can also use to, to do damage, what? Damage. 
to damage ourselves, which means our future and our children. AC Funtime, AC Funtime superstar, Delta Carly Town co-host, and my friend here, that's totally in another world <laughs> right now. But I, listen, I still love him, and I'm gonna come down, sit down, talk with him, and we'll see what happens. God willing, and I'll report back to you. God, we we'll, grew up on that, you remember? We'll see you on the other nah, side. Inshallah, inshallah. <laughs> Back by popular demand. This is the secret bank and show. <laughs> Star 99.7, home with the Steve Harvey Morning Show, R&B and Old School throughout the day. Good Friday evening to you. I am Savannah. And hey, talking about Friday, tonight at 12.30 a.m., make sure you check out Comcast C2. Check out AC Funtime Superstars with the Baby Boomers. And hey, if you check it out, guess what? You'll get a chance to see one of the Star 99.7 All-Stars. We're going to be right there behind the scene doing our thing with AC Funtime Superstars with the Baby Boomers this Friday night at 12.30 a.m. Check this out. If you want to know about the 60s and 70s through positive music, dance and inspiring, enriching, empowering the community, check it out tonight. AC Funtime Superstars with the Baby Boomers on Comcast C2, 1230 AM. Don't miss it. I am Savannah for your number one station. It is Star 99.7. <laughs> One person in the group comes to the group and presents, uh, you know, the entire song, uh, bass line uh, uh, and melody. Then that person obviously takes, usually takes the dominant role in controlling uh, the way that song is going to be presented.
Charleston's very own Beatbox Champion, Mr. BC Pipes. Tell me, see, can you scratch the record for me? about the low country we're here with another superstar and we call this gentleman he is the number one Bootsy and the rubber band Bootsy it's a pleasure seeing you again uh, Bootsy we're gonna talk a little about the days of old back in the 1960s Burke High School King Street Booty, what can you tell me that you can remember about anything about the Avenue we're presently sitting here on what street is this booty it's Ashley and Lyon. If you wanted to see somebody you hadn't seen in a long time, where would you can you can guarantee to meet up with them at? King Street. Back then, we did we have any uh, Lincoln? We had the Lincoln Theater, we had the American Theater, we had the Garden Theater. That was what we call the black clubs. Okay, I mean the black theaters, because we couldn't go in them. Other one, we used to go upstairs to see the movie. Right. Be over the white people. The white people were downstairs, right. and we went upstairs. And we had fun because we did see the movie. We did see each other. If you go on King Street, you meet anybody you want to see, you'll meet them on King Street. Because we had certain areas on King Street that was black areas. Mm -hmm. And then there were white areas. Right. Now they're segregated. And then in the 69, Martin Luther King came here. Right. And March, and I marched too, for the nurses' strike. Come on. We had the nurses' strike in 69. But that was prejudice, during prejudice time now. We marching and they slapped Martin Luther King down. And Martin Luther King tell us, don't y'all start nothing, don't be nothing. And we just go on, go on along with the program. Uh, Booty, tell me, who, who, who was the being responsible for bringing James Brown to Charleston back then? Henry Smith. Henry Smith was the black uh, mayor. Uh, Booty, tell me, at that time, what was the cost of getting into Carney Hall? Oh. I think it was 99 cents? 99, I don't know, 99, about 99, 99 cents. Cent. But I know it was 50 cent to go in the yeah. dance. Yeah, yeah. You can go in any of the dance for 50 cent. Bob Nichols and Flo Mize and all of those other dances with 50 cent. All of them from PL, all of them from the PL. Bob Nichols from, from PL. Uh, listen, Booty, it's been a pleasure interviewing with you, and we're going to come back and talk to you another time at a later date right. because we definitely want to bring you a little history of our right. low country each week. Charleston and the history and as I said before if you've got a dream if you got a vision you need to get started because what we are talking about right now it seemed like it was just yesterday but it's been a long time ago so if you don't get started in your dream and your vision before you know it it's gonna be too late start today don't wait until you get what you need to start your vision Start now. Get what somebody is doing, something that you want to do, and learn all you can about what that thing is that you want to do. And get busy. Arthur Chisholm, and we'll see you on the other side. Peace! Can you ever say that's the way it was?
MC for AC Funtime Superstar. And we are still on Ashley Avenue collecting history. Each week we would like to bring you some part of the history of Charleston. As I said before, if you've got a dream, if you've got a vision, if there's something that you want to do, if you don't get started, it could be too late. These guys are going to tell you something that took place back in the 60s, and it seems like it was yesterday. But trust me, this has been many years ago. So get a grip. Whatever it is you want to do, find someone that's doing what you want to do in life and get started. And we're going to first start here with the gentleman on the right, and he go way back with me. And I want to ask you some of the things that we talked about earlier off camera about the 60s. Tell me something about King Street. On Saturday, if you wanted to find someone that you hadn't seen in a long time, where could you find them? I go by Edwards parking lot. Everybody come in at Edwards. And they would come in on a bus, huh? In a bus, right. And we are speaking with the, wait a minute, tell the, t tell the audience who are you, what's your name? Ollie Frazier. Mr. Frazier, back in the day he had all the money and he had the plan. And I'm not going to say anymore because sometimes I talk too much. But we're sitting here with another friend of mine back in the 1960s, I won't say the 50s, because maybe he's not that old. But sir, give your name and some part of the history. Tell us anything you would like to share about Charleston and your hometown. Well, what it is, I was born and raised here. and. I went to Burke High School, graduated from Burke High School, and one of the things of, well, I've been gone for like 45 years, and now I'm back home, and one of the things that I found was really bad was the fact that during the integration period, that's when the school system went to nothing, and consequently, it's still, you know, still basically the same thing. You know, there's no reason for a... Uh, I don't think segregation was was something that was a positive effect on on the black uh, citizens of uh, Charleston. But, you know, it is what it is. It is what it is. Can we get you to give the audience your name? Bill Archer. Archer. Mr. Bill Archer. And to my screen left here, this Mr. John Laborde. I am the older brother of Nathaniel and Nate Hamilton. Okay. And Nate was the one that took that ball. Yes, he was. Tell me a little about about your brother. Is he the baby's brother? Yes, he is. Tell us a little about the history of Nate and his uh, time doing Burke High School when he took the ball. That was during the 70s? The time they were in school, I was up north. I spent 38 years in, in the city of New York. Okay. Wh what year did you leave Charleston? Uh, in 62, 19. Tell me, you left Charleston in 1962. Tell me a little about the time that you remember about Charleston before you left? Well, when I was here, uh, Charleston was uh, open, you know, because you had the, uh, the Navy Yard, you had the Minecraft base. This was strictly uh, Sailor Town. And my experience was, uh, I say, unique. Yes. I know you remember County Hall. Oh, yes. Uh, County Hall was a legend, and I don't think it should have been turned into a... Uh, into an apartment. Uh, it seemed as though everything that included blacks, uh, it had no status. Well, tell me this. Do you remember when we used to go to County Hall? What was the price to get in back then? Do you remember? Oh, uh, about uh, what two fifty for a ticket, and it was sponsored by uh, the legendary Henry Smith. But every <laughs> every show that came to Charleston, Henry Smith presents. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, yours truly, AC Funtime Superstar, and we will see you. My love has come along.
Get ready for the play, the Gullah Geechee Conversation. Just want to testify. October 2nd, 7 to 8 p.m., 5060 Dorchester Road, Scott's Grand Banquet Hall, North Charleston, MojoArtFestival.com for tickets. Mojo Art Festival, Office of Cultural Affairs, City of Charleston, presentation. For information, 843-735-2189. And stay tuned to AC Funtime, Comcast C2, Friday nights at 12.30, Saturday morning at 9.30. Yeah, oh, yeah. Be there. Here we go. 